And I'm just going to say to you, what about we do a bit of fencing? Eh? Oh, no. Here in Australia, ladies and gentlemen, we love a tale of an underdog. Particularly when they go into battle totally unprepared for whatever it is they might be about to face, and yet still somehow, against all the odds, they manage to come out on top. This is the story of Bill the Fencer, and it's one that I call Fence Off. From a farm in Western Victoria, in the midst of the Mallee Scrub, not too far from one horse town with a tiny run-down pub, where the paddocks are mostly brown and dry, with barely a hint of green, came the most unlikely champion the world has ever seen. Now, the bloke who owned this piece of land was a farmer known as Bill. It was here that he worked tirelessly to hone his greatest skill. And overall, he had 10,000 acres on his run, which meant that there was always stacks of fencing to be done. And Bill erected fences, and wires ran straight and true. His posts were always vertical, with perfect spacing too. When he strained the wires to tension, he'd never had one break. And he did the job at rapid pace, without a sole mistake. Now, Bill enjoyed a beer or two occasionally in town. One hot night, just after he knocked a couple down, his mate Gold Blue said, did you know that fencing is a sport? Bill answered, no. Then said his beer, and sat there deep in the Well, it says so in the paper, the reply he got from Blue. He had not reckoned that there wouldn't be a bloke can finish like you. Bill bought some more before he said, I'll well, never change my arm. Taking on the sports elite won't do me any harm. So Blue got up and made it known to everyone in town that Bill was keen to draw against the fencer of right now. Then he stated, just before the crowd began to clap, <laughs> that Bill can make our one horse town a landmark on the map. So they contacted the Herald Sun in Melbourne that next day. The paper sent a journalist to see them straight away. People told him that our Bill was the best in all his interviews. Bill the fencing farmer made the back page sporting news. A promoter read the story and he got in touch with Bill. He informed him that the time has come to show the world your skill. For I've arranged a date and place for you to have a chance to battle the champion. It was all the way from friends. So Bill went into training for his championship to move. Not just on his own farm, but on neighbouring places too. He built a fence for everything from deer to chooks to cattle. Till finally, the day arrived to fight the champion battle. The centre court at Kuyong was the venue that they chose. And Bill turned it up with posts and wire and dressed in farming clothes with a 10 pound sledge a strainer and some tools for working soil, his opponent came in army with a regulation foil. The crowd was full of country blokes who came in holding newts. As well as that, there were toffee gents who dressed in ties and suits. And just before the, the duel began, Bill heard the crowd applaud. <laughs> then saw that he was up against a joker with a sword. Bill grabbed himself a star post when the duel got underway. He figured he'd use it best to keep the champ at bay. The champ he made a thrust at Bill who somehow parried back. This stunned Bill into action. He went on the attack. Bill banged the champ at the star post and knocked him to the ground. With one by each he planted half a dozen more around the forward fencer. He came back on when he strung and strained the wires before the champ could stand. It was truly brilliant workmanship that Bill had put on show. And the champion ran out of time to try and lean to blow. The officials were unanimous, declaring it a win. For Bill, the fencing farmer, that fenced the fencing win. The crowd all stood and clapped and cheered. Yeah. All very much impressed that a humble Aussie farmer had won against the best. In terms of being champion, he earned himself a crown, and there were weeks of celebration in the little one horse town. These days, in the one horse town, Bill's statue's in the park, 
And then the word of fencing, he had truly left his mark. For though he jeweled just once, before deciding to retire, there are fences now who have down their foils to fight with posts and wire. Like right coming out of the weekend, she can come back on Monday and we'll read it all out. But Monday morning, I came along, any party and half an hour hand went up. Yes, Daniel, I said you read yours. So. And said, uh, My name is Dan. When I grow up, I'll be a man. And I have a plan to go to China and Japan, and I think I can. That's not too bad for a fellow, is it? Then Sadie put her hand up. Yes, Sadie. She said, My name is Sadie. When I grow up, I'll be a lady. But my plan is to have a baby. Dan said, Mum, Miss, can I have another go? She said, Yes, Dan, I know. He said, My name is still Dan. When I grow up, I'll still be a man. But forget about China and Japan. I'll start and help Sadie with her plan. <laughs> I felt very well remembered with one day in September. I was walking down the street in drunken pride. My knees were all a flutter, and I fell down in the gutter. And a pig came up and lay down by my side. As I lay there in the gutter, thinking words I could not utter, a colleague walking by did softly say, You can tell a man that boozes, but the company he chooses. And with that, I picked it up and walked away. Thank you, Alex. Okay, John. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. Oops, I did it again, baby. Yeah! Tune in tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. Bye for now.